Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the trackpad on a MacBook Pro Retina. So this is a 2014 model. Um, the 2013 and more or less the 2015 model is pretty similar. So uh, um, this video should cover you for that kind of midlife cycle MacBook Pro. Um, the 15 inch model is also extremely similar to this. It's slightly different on the inside, but the general gist of the process is about the same. So you should be able to use a bit of common sense to be able to do a 15 inch from this video as well. Um, I've got a replacement trackpad here already. You can buy these on eBay or from Amazon. Um, so uh, the distinguishing feature of this one is the controller is a separate board that kind of sort of stands up from the bottom of the trackpad there. Um, so we'll look at that more when we take the old one out. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom of the laptop off. So let's just close this and flip it over. Now I've already removed the bottom screws from this laptop. So these screws are the Apple security screws and those will answer to the Apple security screwdriver, which looks like this. So that is the Apple five point pentalobe screwdriver. It's a five point star. If you just search eBay for Apple screwdriver, you'll probably come up with these. It's 1.2 millimeters. So let's take that back panel off. Now, the, what, makes this, what makes this a tricky job is that in order to get to the trackpad, we have to remove the battery and that is glued in. So this is what makes this job very unpleasant. Um, on the non-retina models, I've done various videos of doing this on the pre-retina models and the battery just unscrews from that one and it's a dream. So before we go any further, we're gonna disconnect the battery. So get your fingernails or a plastic prying tool just under that battery tab and just flick him up like that. Don't dig in with tools, don't dig in against the board, don't use metal tools. Make sure you use something non-conductive just to flick that guy open. So we're gonna remove a couple of screws and a couple of other bits. I need to undo this screw over here and I don't think no, there, there, there is a label here with some screws under it, but that those don't need to be removed. I'm also gonna take out the speakers. They will give me a bit more room to work around this. It's worth noting on the 15 inch models, you can't remove the speakers without removing the logic board, so you don't get that bonus. But on these 13 inch ones, you can. So I'm gonna use a T5 screwdriver just to take these screws out on the speakers and the battery, and that will give us some more uh, working space. And these speakers are also glued in, but they just pull straight off very easily. They, there's almost no resistance in removing those. And while you're at it, if you want to, you can just clean the dust out of these guys just to do a little bit of tidying up. It's up to you. This left-hand speaker goes around under this flex. Um, I'm going to leave that one plugged in because I could remove this cable and just undo the flex to undo that speaker, but... I don't have to do that, so I'm not going to. So now, as you can see, we've actually got a gap around the edges of the battery, which gives me a lot more room to get my prying tool in under these cells. So that's gonna make my life a whole lot easier. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an ordinary hairdryer. I just use this travel hairdryer, and I'm just gonna put some uh, a bit of heat across the whole thing. We're not, I'm not going to try and heat it up because I don't want to put heat into the battery, but I want to take the chill out of the metal just to put a little bit of warmth into the glue, just to move things along a bit. This is our optional, but the more of these little things you do, the easier it will be to get that battery out. So let's do that. There we go, that'll do. We haven't really warmed it up per se. As I say, I've just taken the chill out of it just so it's not, because otherwise all the glue is just going against the battery. That's a technical term. Um, and just by warming that up, we're just making everything just relax a little bit just so it's not pulling everything together. Right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna tip the laptop up and I'm just gonna spritz some isopropyl alcohol down the side of the first cell. This alcohol won't damage the cell, but we've just, spritzed it down the side so it's going in under the cell and that's going to go in there and just start attacking that glue and now just with a little bit of prying that first cell will just peel up there we go 
and that's the first cell. Now these outer ones are very easy on the 13 inch. As we get onto the bigger cells, it gets harder because there's more glue. But that's basically the technique that I'm gonna do here. We're gonna get alcohol under the cell and then pry it out. Go. That's those two outer ones. Now I'm going to spin the laptop around and do the other two outer ones. So then we've got everything loose before we start tackling the nasty inside ones, which is where everything gets a bit hairy. Is that a screw under there? No, it's not. I can never remember whether these are actually screwed in at all as well, but they're not. Okay, same drill. Alcohol down the edge. First one. For the record, I'm making this look very easy. This has been this is the easiest battery removal I, I think I've ever done on one of these. And that might just be because I'm actually doing all of the support things that all the bits of advice that I've picked up from people over time, you know, use a little bit of heat, use some alcohol. I'm doing all of those things and it's just coming off like a dream. If I had a palette knife instead of just a prying tool, I could probably just go and just rip it straight out. So yeah, as I say, this is looking a lot easier, but it just goes to show that this doesn't have to be a total nightmare. There we go. Okay, so now we've got to do the inside cells, and this is where it gets a little bit more hairy because we have very little room to work. And the other thing as well is that normally when I remove a battery, it's because I'm replacing it. And of course this battery, I want to put it back in again Right, same technique again. I'm just lifting up the cells. I'm trying not to bend the bus bars connecting them. I don't know how much abuse these can take. I've never never been brave enough to test one to destruction. But just going to bend that upwards and just squirt some alcohol under there. Pro tip, it's very handy to put your alcohol in a spritzer bottle like this. This is just an old bottle of window cleaner that I've just cleaned out and filled with alcohol so I have a spritz of it. It's a very useful way of applying it, I've found. Again, I'm just tilting it up just to let that alcohol run under the battery. And this one is a lot harder because I'm having to get under things now. I've got to get under this frame. And I'm also having to do all this without risking damage. And I'm just very slowly lifting up. There we go. Just go very slowly and just let the glue let go, basically. Okay, I think that guy is off. Okay, that looks good. Let's get the last one and then I think we can just go for the big rip. Okay, I think we've got enough to try and rip this battery out now. Here we go. Right, and looking under the battery, you can just see the strips there holding on for dear life. So I'm just gonna get my pry tool in there and just, just cut through those. There we go. And I think that battery is coming out. 
There we go. And there's our battery removed. And the other thing we can do now is we can confirm I haven't damaged any of the cells. We haven't sliced into any of them. If you do put a, if you do slice into your batteries, if, if you do slice into the cells here, then you will need to replace the battery, unfortunately. It may work with a compromised cell. However, you don't want to use compromised cells in a, in a laptop. You're asking for a bad time. Right, so now that is done, we've got this metal plate over the back of the um, trackpad, and this just peels off as well. So I'm just going to lift that off. Oh, that's putting up a bigger fight as well. Okay, I'm going to get the prime tool under there so I don't bend it. You know what? I'm going to get some alcohol under there as well. Just let that run into the glue and just release that glue. Luckily, I don't need to worry about damaging the trackpad because we are replacing that. So. I can be fairly indiscriminate with my prying tool here. There we go. Phew. Well, that's interesting. I haven't seen that design before. So it does unbolt from there. Spoiler alert, I haven't actually done one of these before. So... <laughs> okay. That's the fun part of discovery. All right, well, let's put that metal plate aside. I'm just gonna get a bit of tissue and just dry out the alcohol that I've got swimming over here. So you can uh, sterilize the bottom of this. You can put alcohol on it and clean every last bit of um, schmutz off of it if you want. I generally don't bother. I don't think, you know, I've done it in the past and afterwards I felt like there wasn't really any value in doing that uh, because you're just immediately going to stick a battery back down on top of it anyway. And when that battery gets removed again, it'll leave new schmutz. So, yeah, I just don't see the point in doing that myself. Uh, but, yeah, you can if you want. Uh, right, so uh, we need to remove um, these little hold down brackets here. And I'm just going to double check. Yeah, that does match what I've got. That's fine and dandy. Um, so we're going to remove these hold down brackets and disconnect this cable and then our trackpad should come out from the top. There's the cable out. A little bit of glue there. Uh, my trackpad came with a new cable so I don't need to worry about damaging the old one. But, you know, be careful. And again, using the T5 screwdriver I'm just going to remove these screws here. And that should allow the trackpad to fall out from the other side. Hypothetically, you just need to remove those screws, um, but I'm just taking them all out just for inspection. Right, and now as I lift up the laptop opening the screen. Oh, I thought it was going to fall out, but it didn't. However, if we lift that up, and then if I just give the. And now if I just give that cable a bit of a push, as you can see, that trackpad lifts out. Right. Let's do a little bit of inspection. So as you can see on this one, we actually have a, uh, a flat bay. And I'm going to clean that out while I'm here. I'm going to get in there with the alcohol and get all the grit out from the sides of that. Because grit getting down the sides of your laptop, of your trackpad, will cause poor responsiveness and false input and stuff like that. Uh, the trackpad itself on this one, um, it looks in pretty good condition to me. However, the reason why I'm replacing it is that the clicker on it doesn't work. The clicker has died completely. And worse still, the clicker has died in the on position, which means while this trackpad is connected, the left click does not work on any attached mouse because this one is stuck in the on position and blocking any other left click signals. So that's why this trackpad is getting replaced. Um, okay, right. I'm going to get in there. I'm just going to put some alcohol all across that. And I'm going to get in there with a toothbrush. 
and just get all the sweat and grime and grease and schmutz that accumulates out of those edges clear. Don't worry about making a mess around the trackpad. You can clean that once it's all done. Good. And we'll just wipe that down. All right, that's that. All right, so let's get out our replacement uh, trackpad. And we'll put that into our nice clean bay. So I'll thread the cable through and tuck the bottom bit in and just press that down. We're not worried about alignment and stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's just get some screws holding that guy in place. And these little metal plates have got a large hole and a small hole. I wasn't paying any attention as to which went where. Uh, yeah, we've also got screws that are a large and a small thread. Let's just check which way around. It looks like the larger threads go in the body of the laptop. Which they do. So big holes go at the top. So I'm just going to stick in one screw on the big holes, one screw on the small holes on each side. And I'm not going to tighten them down fully. I'm just securing them. And now we're just going to make sure that that trackpad is actually lined up. So at the moment you can see it's over a bit to the right. So I'm just going to nudge that into place. It looks like this is a little bit easier to line up than the old ones used to be. That looks about right to me. We've got a nice even distribution. So now I'm going to just press that down with one finger to keep it from moving and tighten the screws. And if I'm lucky, it won't move. And it moved. As you can see, it's rotated clockwise a bit. Fine. OK, I'm just going to back out those screws just a touch, just enough so I can just nudge it. It's actually easier to look at my screen for this where I've got a really nice high contrast top down view. That looks right. Tweak. Tweak. That looks good. Possibly a little bit low in the bottom right, but that's good enough for me. If you want to, you can spend half an hour getting that exactly perfect. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put in the rest of the screws instead. And one more check. Yeah, that trackpad is still aligned. That's fine. Groovy. Okay, now we're going to put our cover plate back on. And that is connected back up. All right, so now we're going to bring our battery back in. So let me just have a quick look at the back of this. This has had a bit of time for the alcohol to evaporate off of it now. So uh, I'm just gonna smush the existing tape back down on it. If you want to, you can you know, systematically remove all this old tape and put new stuff on it, but I'm deliberately not going to do that because invariably at some point in the future this battery is probably going to get replaced and by leaving the tape off I'm going to make either my life or the person who replaces the battery's life significantly easier by not gluing it back in because a battery really doesn't need to be glued into a laptop. You know, it's not going to fall out. So just making sure that's all flat, that'll do fine. 
I'm aware that it doesn't look very tidy. However, it's inside the laptop. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's just tuck that one in. And I'm just muscling this into place at the moment. And you can just check that your battery is in alignment because we've got that screw hole there. And I can see that that's lined up. So I know that the battery is vaguely in position. All right, that looks good. So I'm just going to press that down. And because I've ruined the tape on this, that will come out fairly easily, but it won't fall out. As you can see, I just turned that laptop over and it didn't fall out. So let's reconnect the battery. And I think this battery's got charge in it. It has. And yes, the screen on this one is ruined. Okay, and we can move the mouse as you can see. So the trackpad works and I can click on things as well. Good stuff. Excellent. That is all working. So I'll shut that back down just so we can finish reassembling the laptop. And just for safety, I'm just going to disconnect that battery again. No need to take any risks. Uh, right, let's put in the other speaker, which I'm going to brush down. Ugh. Not going to sterilize it. I'm just going to use a paintbrush just to take the surface dust off of it. Looks slightly nicer than it did before. It is actually a two-part speaker, this. We've got a tweeter and a little mini woofer. They're surprisingly good, the speakers in these things, considering their size. They're not awful. Modern speakers are amazing, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, right, uh, back onto the T5 screwdriver, and we're going to put the screws back into the speaker and the battery. There we go, and that all looks good. While I'm at it, I'm just going to check the heatsink, and I can see that the heatsink is not excessively dusty. In fact, there's no dust there at all. Um, I think I cleaned this one out while I was working on, while I was diagnosing it. But check for dust around this speaker area and give it a blowout with some compressed air if you can, just to keep that all happy. On this one, you can actually see the back of the fin stack there, so you can always very clearly see if there's dust in the way. You want to get rid of all of that. If you've got a 15 inch, you'll have two fans. Check them both. Uh, past that, that is ready. Let's plug that battery back in again, again. Battery connected. And the back panel can go back on. Back panel, position that up. And just give that a firm press. And now we'll put some screws back in there. All right, and now I'm going to put all these screws back in. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.